Hi, and welcome to Strength in Scripture. My name is Alex, and today I'm with Stephen. Hola. And Josh. Hello. As we continue to strengthen ourselves in Scripture. Before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Kind Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you now. As we open the Word of God, please guide us and lead us to the understanding of thy truth. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and thank you. Amen. 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 So today we're going to be talking about accepting Jesus. And I have a question for you guys. And that question is, what is the only way that we can effectively fight against the, the foes in our spiritual life that we fight against? The things that, you know, really affect us and bring us further away from God. There is no better answer than the one that the Bible gives. And that is found in James 4, 7. It says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. All right. Uh, so we have to resist the devil. We have to submit ourselves to God. We resist by submitting ourselves to God. And when we don't submit, actually, when we don't fill our soul with the Spirit of God, the soul is filled out with the Spirit of Satan or with devils. And we actually have a parable that Jesus himself gave us found in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through 45. It says, But the unclean spirit, when he is gone out of the man, passeth through waterless places, seeking rest, and findeth it not. Then saith, I will return into my house where I came out, and where he was is come. He findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more evil than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man becometh worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this evil generation. In other words, when we don't have Jesus in our heart, our heart is filled with far worse spirits than they were previously. That's why it's so important to always keep our, our mind on Jesus and always accept Him and continuously surrender our heart to Him. When we, when we talk about surrender of our heart, we talk about accepting Him as our personal Savior on a daily basis. That's what Paul said. He said, I die daily. And you know, something that struck to me with that is that it's not only about emptying the heart, but it's about putting Christ in there, not leaving it empty. And that's how we become sons and daughters of God. Exactly. When we say we become sons and daughters of God, it means that we adopt now this character. It's just imagine a, a prince. He doesn't act like he wants to because he has a new status or he has the status that he needs to now hold by behaving himself like one. You can't say you're a prince and act like if you were a man from exactly. with no ethics or no moral standards. So then we can say that Christ came to give more than forgiveness. He gave adoption into the family of God at the same time. Exactly. And you know, Matthew 5 verse 8 is a good verse for this. What, what it means to for me more than forgiveness. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So it's not only forgiving of our sins, but it's drawing the pure in heart, the ones who no longer want sin, closer and closer to God until we are able to see Him face to face. Just like in the parable, when you are pure in heart, when you do not have the, the bad spirits living within you, but it is the clean spirits that keep the, uh, the room of your heart nicely, nicely clean and tidy. Exactly. This is how, what it means to have that purity and holiness of Jesus Christ. That's what means to take hold of the righteousness of Jesus Christ, putting it into your heart. It changes, it gives you a new status, and now we see that this is what we actually need in our daily lives now. We could ask, what do we need in our daily lives? Remember, Paul said we have to die daily, but there's more to this, there's much more. And we have to find this through our experience. And as we read through the Bible, through examples of Peter, uh, I often remind, remember guys, we actually discussed this a little while ago when we talked about life of Peter. What was the one constant thing that Jesus kept working on him? He kept bringing to his heart the need that he needed to die to self, he needed, that he needed Jesus. He and needed he to needed, put his righteousness aside. That's right. And he needed to have the revival within him daily, right? Mm -hmm. The same thing is, is applicable to us. There's need of such revival of heart and religion as has been experienced in ancient Israel, as has been experienced in the with the disciples of exactly. Jesus Christ, with us as if well. If you look at the disciples, when they had that revival at, at the day of Pentecost, and after they had spent so many years with Jesus, their religion was practical. Because they ho got hold of this righteousness, made mm -hmm. it his old, his, their own, and we could, we could identify this 
to 2 Corinthians 5.21, which says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Exactly. We, they, they were changed because they knew that Jesus Christ died for them. So, and the righteousness of him now became there as well. So the only way to really safeguard ourselves from all the evil that we surround ourselves with daily is to, in faith, go and take hold of that righteousness that is promised to us through Christ and lay ours aside. We have to be always attentive that our faith is genuine. Because if you think there is faith, but there is also something that's presumption. called presumption. Exactly. You think you are, but you're not. And the Bible is very clear about this in James 2, 19, 20. It says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou dost dwell the devil also believe and tremble. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is, is dead? dead? Exactly. You know, we can say there are people I've met who I talked on the street. Oh, I believe in God. Well, okay, so does the devil. Yeah. So does the fallen angels. You know, the, it doesn't mean anything. There is this saying. religion that's going on nowadays. Just believe and you will be saved. Believe, 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 believe. But there is no real, conv there is no real change in the life. I think when the change or when Jesus Christ, when the, He comes in and sets His kingdom within our heart, the real changes will be produced in our life. And that's in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Excellent, uh, excellent verse. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10 5 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that is exalted against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We've discussed obedience to the law in the last two episodes. And here it ties in together saying that now that you understand what the law is, what obedience is, begin exercising. By doing what? Casting down every high thing that is exalting against the knowledge of God. Okay, So we need, we need to practically Let's, stop reading, stop watching exactly, things that are distracting us. We How have do to we run make that away. practical? We have to run away from these things. We have yes. to run away from presumption and now adopt real faith. What is real faith? Well, what's Let's the, yeah, read what's this. Let's read it. Hebrew 11 one will give us a perfect definition. Is Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. We don't see Jesus Christ die on the cross because, well, first of all, we're not in the times that happened, but we believe and there's also evidence to back this up. The Bible itself is the greatest evidence that we have. Exactly. It's a belief rooted in the heart that embraces Christ as a personal Savior. That's what faith is. So how are faith and love essential to one another? Can one of you guys read Galatians 5 or 6? It says, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Through, through love is how faith works. It's what it's saying here. You know, it's saying it doesn't matter if you do all these outward things. If you don't have that faith that works through the love you have for Christ and everyone around you, it's just it's not going to matter. Because faith has a purpose. It's, it has an actual foundation. Now let me ask you, what is the purpose what is our part in the salvation? Why does God want really to save question. us? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, Paul in one of his, uh, in his epistles, he wrote, For by grace have ye been saved through faith, that, and that is not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Salvation, it is the gift of God, but, the, but through faith. And that faith is a transactional faith that changes us, as we discussed, and it changes us only when we have allowed it to change exactly. us, when we've emptied ourselves of sin of the external things that are occupying our internal mind and conscience. You know, something that pops in my mind is something we said about Peter. God had to save Peter from himself. And it's the same work in us. It's, we have to say, I will take the gift and I will lay down myself. I will pick up Christ and I will put myself down. We see now that we have the key to open heaven. In, in a sense, we could say to open heaven mm -hmm. or to completely shut it off. The way we enter into salvation or we enter in, in a communion with Jesus Christ is through faith, real genuine faith. But the way we can s cut this relation is through unbelief. Exactly. This is why Hebrews 11.6 says this, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is rewarded of them that diligently seek them. If you think that you can be saved by your own because you're good, 
because you have done good things, you have done donations to people, because you help your neighbor, but there's no real love in it, but you don't believe in Jesus Christ, it avails nothing. We need to have Jesus Christ as the motor that it works everything that out. That runs the machine, yeah. Exactly. So Satan is ready to steal away the blessed assurance of God and his salvation from us. Let's not let him. Let's continue to be strengthened in Scripture. Let's continue to study and pray daily that through this word, through these studies and videos that we produce, you too may be strengthened in Scripture daily. Amen. Bye. Amen.